uh, <coughs> major investment houses that have got all the money. It's 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 uh, it's future uh, companies that request government assistance where right. the CEO pay is right. limited to five hundred thousand. Well, and they're going to need their cronies at the heads. I mean, we watched Bank of America eat up Merrill Lynch, and somebody's going to be eating up Bank of America. So you you need your henchmen yeah, the in there. U.S. To, government. Yeah, you need your henchmen in there to to engineer these deals, uh, to allow the uh, repurchasing or buying out, if you will, or rollover or whatever name you want to give it anymore. Uh, but uh, yeah, Steve, anything else? Uh, well, uh, yeah, you know, I keep hearing that uh, we should not go against uh, free trade, international free trade. But my question then becomes: We've got a one, almost a one trillion dollar balance of trade deficit. Nobody's buying our products anyway. Why should we worry about uh, some kind of some uh, country uh, boycotting U.S. products when well, we're not even selling products? But the, the, the problem is that they have us now hooked into the global alliance, and a lot of these companies that are registered on the New York Stock Exchange uh, as American companies, actually it's a shell of a company operating here. Their operations are overseas. That's where they're making their profits, building the stuff, and sending it back in the United States. So you're going to see a lot of people hollering and screaming and complaining, just like Caterpillar did. You know, I mean, didn't you think it was a great idea if we're going to rebuild bridges, we use American steel? But Barry Sartoro says, well, we can't do that because we don't want to anger these people in the European Union or wherever uh, to start a trade war. They are going, they're going to keep the globalist agenda in place. And if the United States has to fall right flat on its face and never get back up, so much the better for the globalists. We were the thorn in their side to begin with. So all well, of this, I, you get keep this in proper context. As, well, I'm and, just glad that my tax dollars are going to GM so that they could rebuild down over in uh, South America. I'm and, really and, happy. And, about and you know that. what else? You know what else I heard about this? And 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 this. This goes to show you the corruptness of the International Monetary Fund, the Bank of International Settlements. Call them what you will. In Brazil, last year they had 400,000 people, children, die of starvation-related disease, if not outright starvation. How did that little thing get engineered? The number two exporter on the entire planet of foodstuffs, guess what, is Brazil. But we have the bankers in there saying that, look, you're going to do deals, you're going to do trade, you're going to do whatever's necessary because we've got our hooks in you right now. And you will do what I say. In the meantime, the people in Brazil are literally starving to death. They're, they're, uh, let, me, let me just say this and then we'll move hey, hey, John, on. John, and yes. that's true. And not only that, most of those big companies in Brazil are owned by transnational conglomerates run by the Illuminists. I think Robbie just fell out of his chair. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. I appreciate your call. Okay, you guys have a good day. Well, what, were you, what were you going to say, John? Um, uh, about Brazil? Yes. Yeah, I. Uh, this has been going on for quite some time. And uh, just yesterday, I was reading stories uh, of this, what was it, 11 or $12 billion that General Motors got? A billion of that went over to their Brazil operations. Now, folks, I understand that General Motors is worldwide, and God love their dirty little souls for trying to capture an entire world market. The problem we have, they went to us or the federal government for bailout money, a billion of which just went over to Brazil. They're coming up in front of Congress in seven days with their plan of how to survive, and there, the rumors have already been circulating, Bob and Robbie, that uh, General Motors is going to have to seek bankruptcy protection. And the reason given? To protect the loans that they're getting from us, the U.S. taxpayer. Now, hold on here a second. General Motors better make up its mind where it wants to move. Let it go to Brazil. Let it go to wherever they got car plants. But we're not bailing out the American corporations here for them to maintain profits in some place that might be working for them. Uh, I, I'm not bailing out the workers of Brazil here, for God's sakes. I mean, gentlemen, this has gone beyond even any semblance of belief. I, I'm just sitting here just reeling. I, I'm, I, internally, I'm fuming. 
And, and what I would like to do, hell, I don't even know what I'd like to do right now. Because this, the, we have people, Bob, and you've said it correctly, you have the Illuminist with inside of our own government engineering the virtual collapse of this country. And, and we had a warning sign in 1929. We saw what a fantabulous job these people did in 11 years simply because the banks withdrew the money from circulation or, let's just put it correctly, they pulled the credit from the market. They are doing the same thing, only this time they have a gun to our heads saying that if you do not bail us out, the whole system is going to collapse and maybe or maybe not, we'll get around to making available credit for people that need credit. We don't need credit anymore. Folks, we've never needed credit to begin with. But these international bankster gangsters are holding that gun to our head, scaring the living crap out of Congress, and in turn, with the media, scaring the living crap out of the American people. Here's the bottom line to this. There should have been no bailouts, no tarps, no money, no nothing. Let the God-blessed banks collapse. Let the housing market reach its fair value market. Let everything come to a grinding halt and then pick it up from there. The, uh, the, there, there is no solution to what these people are doing. This is the coup d'etat, Bob, and I, I don't even know how to adequately explain this to our listeners, that this is the coup d'etat to make sure that this country never returns by the indebtedness that's going to these banks right now. And, you know, on top of that, they've done the same thing to Europe, and the rest of the world is going to follow. They're going to bring everybody to their knees in order to implement not only a world currency, but a world government. And that's, I, I, you know, John, you and I in this program, and there's a couple of others, but other than that, none of the newsletter writers will go into this. Mm -hmm. They will not call it what it is. Either that or they're too dumb to understand the third dimensional activity of these people. This is really what it's about. And they miss the whole point. They mislead people. And you know why? Because they want to be accepted by their peers and they don't want to be thought to be off the wall. I'll wave at them as I'm moving away from the Titanic that's going down. I will wave to them from my seat in the lifeboat. Thank you very much. Have a nice drowning day. We'll continue with your calls your comments, and your questions right after this. Bob, Bob, we've got to have Robbie do the deal of the day before, lest we forget. Robbie? Yes, sir. Deal of the day. And uh, I'll make a comment when he finishes. Okay. <laughs> deal of the day is uh, Jim and Mox. Ooh. Fifth of an ounce. Uh, $225. Order 20 or more, receive a free subscription to the International Forecaster and or an extension if you've already got one. Total price, $4,500 delivered. And that's for 20 pieces? Yep. All right. German marks. Circulated, uncirculated? Uncirculated. Pre-1933. Pre-1933. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -hmm. I just checked the U.S. Mint's website. Yes. It's amazing. Last year, they minted, uh, for the month of January, they minted 22,000 one-ounce American gold eagles. Uh, for oh. the month of January uh, this year, they minted 93,000. No, you know, I was going to say that. <laughs> no half ounces. I get the report right in front of me here. Yeah, no, 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 no half ounces, no quarter ounces, no tenth ounces. Just one ounces. Well, if they could make up a five-ounce coin, I'm sure that they would be doing it. Bob, and and they've yeah. changed their policy at the U.S. Mint. Before you had a 30-day right of return of any product you bought from the U.S. Mint. Yes. Now you have seven days. Seven days. Is that business days or just seven days? Well, it says seven days. Uh -huh. And why so would anybody want to return any gold that they purchased from them? Well, the Mint is... Well, I mean, sometimes they send out defective products or something's <laughs> nicked or whatever the case may be. Or the gold might be made out of something else. <laughs> no, they, we can say a lot of bad things about uh, the U.S. Mint, but that's not one of them. I, I, I just want you to come across uh, some Obama coins. I, I'm still waiting for, your, for you to get those, Robbie. Yeah. 
<laughs> After my show today, uh, uh, Obama won't be, won't be, uh, well, he won't be my best friend. Mm. Uh, okay. Bob, you wanted to say something. Uh, he already covered it, the U.S. Mint. Mm. I have the figures right here. Um, it also said that uh, inflows into gold-backed exchange-traded funds uh, went considerably higher. And uh, they reached 1,317 tons recently. Last month's flows were 105 tons into um, 